welcome to my channel. So we painted this beautiful Calathea leaf with my students on Patreon and now I'm gonna walk you through the process we took to paint it. So let's start by mixing up the colors. So I chose a few primary colors and I mix my greens using the same pigments. So I chose a cooler yellow, lemon yellow and warm yellow Conacton gold as my two yellows. And I added phthalo blue and created this very fresh bright green as my underlayer. So the second layer would be dark green for around the edges of that leaf. So using again the same pigments, lemon yellow, quinacridone gold, adding blue, but this time I'm also adding some Sennelia red to make the green darker and more natural. And we need third mix that is almost black green. So again, I'm using all the same pigments, but in stronger, more saturated quantities, have a little bit more blue in it to create this really, really dark, nearly black green. As you can see, using the same pigments, you can create different shades of green. So I'm gonna start by applying water glaze first, and that's how I choose to apply all my base layers using wet on wet technique. So we want to make sure our water glaze are very even on the paper. So then I'm gonna start applying my bright light green first all over the leaf except the white highlights. So just try to paint around them. Once I'm done covering all of the leaf, I clean my brush, take the water out and I sweep through some of those highlights to collect some of the pigment that I couldn't avoid. Cleaning your brush regularly after each sweep is essential if you want to be able to lift the color off the paper. So once I've done that and let the glaze dry completely, I chose to add a little bit more of the green in certain areas to have a tonal values within that light base layer because once we've done that, we will no longer be working with that light layer. We will be putting on the dark colors and all the details. So I want to be finished with my light layer first. So I did that and let the leaf dry completely. So now I apply a second water glaze, but this time only on a half of the leaf. And we're gonna be painting the edges of the leaf. So I quickly run dark green all over the edge first and then go back to the beginning and start putting down and dragging some of that color down the veins. Not all the way because at the top they look a little bit blurry and, and has this feathery edges and that's why I chose to do it on a water glaze rather than on a dry paper. So now you can see how each vein ends in this fuzzy effect. And so let's go and do that on the other side too. So now we can go and paint in those circular dark shapes on the leaf and I'm not wetting the paper first because they are pretty sharp and so I can just paint straight on the dry paper with wet pigment. And on the areas that I have highlight, I put a little bit of color, then clean my brush, take the water out and I feather away that color creating a little bit of textured lighter surface. So the colors on this leaf are really, really dark and they're nearly black. So we will need quite a few layers to achieve that darkness. And you can't go and paint straight with a very strong dark colors. You want to keep your watercolors quite watery, especially when you're glazing, is because if you put very thick layers, they won't seep into the paper and they get muddy and you won't be able to build upon those layers. So you want to stack the layers in quite thin watercolor mixes because so that they would soak into the paper and then you can easily apply more and more colors and so if you paint that way you will always be able to stack that watercolors on top of each other if you go too thick uh, that will be a problem and you won't be able to do that and so even if you need something extremely dark you want to build up the darkness and that color gradually
So now, when I let all the layers dry completely, I'll go around all the dark parts and with damp paint, I will be building the tonal values of those dark colors. So just as I just mentioned, we're gonna be building upon those layers to make them really dark. And so keeping my mixes quite fresh and watery, and before coming back to the area again, I always let the glaze dry. So if you want to come back to the area that you just painted, you have to let it dry first. And so I'll do that a couple of times and we will move on to the next step. So this leaf is painted with my students on Patreon. That's where you can find a full step-by-step -step guided tutorial and paint along as well. There are reference photos, line drawings and material lists. And I wanted to mention that I have created this month a new tier on Patreon where alongside all of the tutorials, you can also receive a print every month, a five gisle print on archival cotton paper, if that interests you. So let's go back to the painting now. So we finished glazing and building tonal values on all those dark parts. And now we can go around and paint in those veins. So now we're going into smaller detail now. So pick the brush that has the sharpest point that you can find. And this time you want to use slightly drier paint because in order to create those really dark uh, veins, you can not have lots of water or droplets coming off your brush. And try to avoid highlighted areas and make the veins subtle in those areas. So in order to make sure you have the right amount of water in your brush, is when you pick up the color, dab your brush on a kitchen towel or the towel that you clean your brushes in to take and absorb the extra moisture so that you are left just with the pigment. You need enough water just so that it would be easy to glide your brush across the page, but you don't want to create thick lines and droplets coming off. Right. So now I pick up my smallest brush and that is number zero by Vincent Newton series seven. And I use that brush for dry brush and I love that brush for this technique. And so what I'm doing now is picking up quite a dry paint and dry brush entire dark parts of my leaf in order to smooth them out and build the color and paint in the last detail. So all those layers you can see they're a little bit uneven. I can see a little bit of like gaps in the glaze. So that's what I'm filling in with the tiniest brush strokes. And also I want to build more upon that color and create it really saturated and dark. And also painting in the detail in the highlighted areas and all those veins around the edges have a little bit fuzzy effect which I also try to mimic by dry brushing the tiniest brush strokes across that vein. So we are really close to finishing this leaf and what I would like to do now is lift a little bit of color in order to connect the veins in the dark parts. So using clean damp brush, I rub very gently the vein area in a dark part and dab with kitchen towel to absorb the paint that I just lifted off the paper. And I'm gonna do that on all of the dark circular shapes to create this a little bit more natural and realistic look, but you have to make sure that you connect the veins in those dark parts with already existing veins that are going around the leaf. So now last but not least is when we paint in that really fine veining across 
across entire leaves. So again, you need to choose the brush that has the tiniest, sharpest point. And again, using quite dry paint so that you would be able to achieve those very thin lines. And with a little bit of patience, hopefully we can finish the entire leaf. So I hope you enjoyed the video and you're gonna give it a thumbs up and follow for more future videos. And if you would like to paint along, join my Patreon community and I will guide you all the way through. We'll see you in the future videos. Bye!